Welcome to the news on Zodiac, the headlines. Government appeals for stakeholders' hand in preparing citizens for COVID-19 vaccine administration. Labor Minister Kandodo Fort Salima Sugar Company of hiring foreign nationals beyond required numbers. Make schedule to meet soon by on the by-elections for six vacant constituencies and wards. In sports, Sulam awaits government's clearance on public gatherings to resume Super League games. Now the news in detail. The Ministry of Health has called on stakeholders to commence preparations for the administration of COVID-19 vaccine through interventions such as sensitization campaigns on the importance of the exercise. Minister of Health Kumbise Kandorichiponda says currently, government is formulating a budget for logistics in the operation, an area she said shall also need support. She said this on Friday at Pingu National Stadium COVID-19 Field Hospital in Nilongwe when receiving a donation of assorted medical items from Press Trust and Nilongwe Water Board. This report for more. As the country expects to start receiving COVID-19 vaccines next month, government says various stakeholders should be on the ground assisting in preparations. Minister of Health Kumbize Kandodojibonda says the country's health facilities need code rooms for proper storage of the vaccine and intensified sensitization on its benefits in the fight against the COVID-19. Speaking at the Bingo National Stadium COVID-19 Field Hospital in Ilongwe after receiving a donation of assorted items for treatment of patients suffering from COVID-19 from Press Trust and Ilongwe Water Board, Kandodojibonda said support is needed from various stakeholders on the administration of the vaccine. We need to start sensitization uh, and public awareness as well. Uh, we need the uh, support in terms of logistical issues because when the vaccines come, they have to be available and accessible in each and every district of Malawi. So you are talking of uh, transport issues as well. But at the same time, we also, you know, there are code room items. So it means we need the code room storage in each and every uh, district hospital. Chairperson for Press Trust, Audrey Mala, said the organization has set aside about 200 million kwaja for COVID-19 interventions. In this particular equipment procurement, we have spent 87 million, but uh, we also are into infrastructure development. So in the health sector, we had to look at the areas, the strategic areas that we could quickly uh, intervene uh, in order to respond to the COVID pandemic. So together with what we have spent, the 87 million, and looking at what we are spending in the other three hospitals, it is coming to 200 million. On his part, chairperson for the Water Board, engineer Joji Kajanga, said they have donated oxygen cylinders and provided a water bowser which will address water challenges at the facility. President Lazarus Chagwera announced recently that the country shall receive first consignment of COVID-19 vaccine next month. This is Winston Kaimira for Zodiac in Ilongwe. Still on COVID issues, Umzuzu University has ventured into production of hand sanitizer as part of the institution's contribution towards COVID-19 fight in the country. Head of Biological Sciences Department, who is also the production manager for Mzuni Hand Sanitizers, Twalibu Tande, says about 60,000 of the product will be donated to health facilities, the elderly and the people with disabilities. Toira Kumuenda has more. Mzuzu University, Head of Biology Sciences Department, who is also the production manager to Ali Butandwe, told Zonia that the institution plans on donating 60,000 sanitizers to communities of Nzuzu and Karape. Tandwe says much as preventive measures were put in place, not many are able to find water points handy for hand washing, hence hand sanitizers become handy. He, however, said not everyone can access hand sanitizers a development that has made the institution to produce hand sanitizers. There are some people uh, who cannot afford even to go and buy that hand sanitizer, even at 150. To them, getting 150, they say I should buy something or sort to have something at home. So we thought the best way uh, to be part and parcel of enforcing people following the COVID-19 preventive measures is to give them and tell them we use the hand sanitizer. Tandwe further said the sanitizers will target those that have disabilities, the elderly, as well as hospitals. He believes with more help, the university can reach out to other districts in the north, and not just Mzuzu and Karape. For Sunrise in Mzuzu, I'm Toera Kmwinda. Minister of Labor Ken Kandodo says Salima Sugar Factory continues to hire foreign nationals 
beyond numbers required by law who are taking up jobs that can otherwise be done by locals. Kandodo said this on Friday, where he ordered that all Indian nationals at the factory should produce work permits by next week or risk expulsion. In July last year, the Immigration Department arrested over 60 Indian nationals on allegations of illegal stay. Some of them were fined in court. The Department of Disaster Management Affairs says it is still has a deficit of over 10 billion kwacha out of the 48.6 billion kwacha needed in responding to 2.6 million hunger-stricken Malawians in the ongoing 2020-2021 lean season food insecure response program. However, Dodma spokesperson Chibido Kamula has assured those affected not to panic as interventions towards relief assistance are already progressing. Speaking to Zodiac Friday, social commentator Victor Jipofia says it is a high time government develop policies aimed at responding to hunger effectively as the country experiences the same yearly. This report by Blessings Kangombe. Spokesperson for the Department of Disaster Management Affairs, Dod Machipiro Kamura, has told us that the ongoing lean season food insecure response program has a deficit of about 10 billion kwacha. However, despite the deficit, he says hunger stricken people have already started benefiting from the response interventions, such as cash transfers, besides reef maize and other commodities. In terms of the resources, um, the total requirement for the program is uh, 48.6 billion kwacha, and of course, we have managed uh, to source around 37.8 billion kwacha. This leads to the above 10 billion billion kwacha. We hope that uh, together with our partners, such as the WST and other, should be able to address the gap as we go back. Meanwhile, social commentator Victor Chipofia has urged government to develop policies that can effectively respond to hunger at all times rather than waiting for the same to happen. As a country, we have failed to provide for a lasting solution. So I want to say that uh, in the long run, there needs to be strategies and plans that should be put in place to be able to for us to cater for our people. We've got programs like the Greenbelt program. We've got Lake Malawi. We've got water across the whole country. All these resources, I don't believe as a country we should be worried about people going hungry. In Malawi Vulnerability Assessment Committee, MVAC report revealed that between the months of December 2020 and March 2021, over 2.6 million people will be food insecure in all 28 districts of the country. The senior resident magistrate court in Irongwe has committed to the High Court a case involving Norman Chisale bodyguard to former President Peter Mutarika and two others. Mr. Chisale, alongside Peter Mukito, Rosa Mbidizi and businessman Mahmoud Shafia Chunara are being accused of using Mutarika's T pin in the procurement of 800,000 bags of cement duty free. For details, is Western Guta. Paulos Norman Chisale, Peter Mukito, Rosa Mbirizi and Mohamed Shafi Chunara are accused of fraudulently using former president Peter Mutarika's tipping in importation of 800,000 bags of cement. They are being accused of committing the offense between 2018 and 2019. The four have been charged with seven counts which include fraud, money laundering, abuse of office, falsifying documents and smuggling. Director of Public Prosecution Stephen Kayuni asked the court to commit the case to the High Court which senior resident magistrate Shirin Chirwa granted. Kayuni informed the court that the state will be joined by the Anti-Corruption Bureau, Finance Intelligence Agency and the Malawi Revenue Authority. Some matters are moved from the lower court to the high court that they can be tried there. This one, considering the nature of the matter and the complexity of it, it's a matter that is triable in the high court. Upon completion of the, the summary procedure trial, the lower court is supposed to prepare that small record for, and transmit to the high court. So upon transmission to the high court, which is in the quickest of time, uh, we should be able to obtain a date for hearing when uh, um, the High Court has located a judge who can uh, uh, hear the matter. The High Court will make a determination on when the case will continue. Reporting for Zodiac in Nilongwe, this is Western Guta. You're watching news on Zodiac. We'll be right back shortly. Stand by. Precious things have a secret formula. While John is busy trying to impress, James discovered Tango's secret.
Tangu uses purity sanitary products from purity body wash, purity hands wash, purity body lotion, to purity dish wash. After a week of using purity sanitary products, James won the heart of Tango. Use purity sanitary products. Now, there's a better, safer, user-friendly and affordable disinfectant you can trust. Introducing Safe Surface Disinfectant from Ethco. This is a liquid-based surface cleaner that can kill 99.9% .9 of germs and viruses, including the coronavirus. Disinfect your offices, shops, education and religious institutions and your home with Safe Surface Disinfectant. Safe surface disinfectant for a cleaner and safer surface in just one go. Ethco, that's the spirit. If there's one thing that all soaps do, it's wash. From buckets to basins, bathrooms to streams, and everything in between. <laughs> all soaps wash. Yes, but Protex is different. Its reinvented formula with flaxseed oil boosts your skin's natural anti-germ defenses by 10 times more, protecting you against 99.9% .9 of germs. So what keeps us healthy? Protex! Good health starts here. Ah ah, Hey, <laughs> 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 Commanso and Hamini in the Matumikida, and in no candy to cool with your mind. So, Nandi, here to Mpana, Mina, Tumpana, did you display? I see some. Yeah, Nibanga so meso, Commanso is also was on Zankayena. Agula Gulo, Grand Chito Saboma, Candy Famo Dindo Chito Sanki on Dianto, Cabinet de Fochita Kurembedua, Tiguena Guru La Chuma, Gongole, Commasma business, so much in our Codipod, Kutipo, Grimby Damlandu, Grimmy Sibra, Cabinet of Jason and Chito Gumene. Tengao, Rufigani, Kujogera Office of the Director of Public Officers Declarations, Odipod. Welcome back. Let's take a look at the headlines. Government appeals for stakeholders hand in preparing citizens for COVID-19 vaccine administration. Labor Minister Kandodo Ford Salima Sugar Company of hiring foreign nationals beyond required numbers. Make schedule to meet soon on by-elections for six vacant constituencies and wards. In sports, Sulama awaits government's clearance on public governance to resume Super League games. The Malawi Electoral Commission says it will meet soon to set dates for holding by-elections in six constituencies and a ward. The vacancies have been occasioned by a death of sitting MPs and nullification of May 2019 parliamentary poll results by the court. 
Mafriwa explains. The commission has head of the judgment and uh, being a decision established by law, uh, we respect the ruling of the High Court in the three elections. So what it means is that the commission now have a task to sit down and be planning for the by-elections as to when we are going to hold them. Uh, you must also wish to remember that we got the uh, other three constituencies and the two words which are so vagant at the moment. So it would be in the best interest of the Commission to conduct all these uh, by-elections together. So when the Commission has developed everything, when we are ready with the calendar and we know we got all the resources, uh, the Commission will announce when the by-elections will be held. The Department of Land says it is finalizing the land demarcation exercise for individual land holders, a process that will enable communities to have full ownership of land portions. Currently, communities of traditional authority Wasambo in Karonga, which is one of the eight districts where the exercise is being piloted, are confirming their land parcels ahead of receiving customer land certificates to fully own their land. Angela Mkandawiri filed this report. Following a land demarcation exercise that took place in 2020 in all eight districts where the land demarcation and adjudication exercise is being piloted, land holders in the targeted areas are now verifying their registered land portions have come out as presented and with their names before they are issued certificates. In traditional authority of Asambo in Karonga where communities presented their names for land demarcation, land holders say they are satisfied with how their land parcels have come out and are ready to have their certificates. In the past, people used to disagree a lot over land, but this program is good and that such cases will not happen again. Minister of Land Surveying and Geographical Information Systems Specialist Masi Dambano says the land confirmation exercise marks the last phase of the whole land demarcation initiative, which is in line with government's directive that all land-related projects should be finalized before the land laws are taken to parliament for review. So what is happening is you know you might be aware that there was a presidential directive that uh, all land related uh, works are, uh, should be completed by December 2020 and indeed we completed that but now this is just administrative work which we are doing so after this exercise is finished what is going to happen is uh, all the landholders or all the people in the village will be given their land certificate that that land belongs to them. One of the provisions in the customary land law is that a landholder can only sell a parcel of their land five years after being issued a certificate. For Zodiac, this is Angela Mkandawiri. We now go to sports news. Super League of Malawi says the resumption of Super League games will depend on government's clearance on public gatherings which was restricted to only 50 people. Sulam President Tia Somba Banda told us today, Friday, that no games can be staged under minimum requirements and will wait until authorities ease some of the restrictions. Brad Kanya must file this report. Three weeks ago, Super League of Malawi Sulam suspended Super League matches for three weeks but the suspension is set to prolong as the elite league runners say matches cannot be staged at the moment due to the COVID-19 situation in the country. Sulum President Tia Somba Banda told us that despite that the three-week recess period has elapsed, the games will not resume as planned. He added that the games will only resume if government eases some of the restrictions, including public gatherings. Uh, only up until the 50 plus ceiling is revised upward, that's when we can resume the games because we are trying to adhere to uh, the regulation of the 50 people ceiling gathering at any uh, public event which was uh, considered into the law of the country. So with that, we are just uh, abiding to that law as a law-abiding citizen, a, a corporate citizen. So at the moment, uh, that revision of more than 50 hasn't uh, been done. So we are obliged to abide to that law. Super League games were suspended while they were going into its 13th week and Silver Strikers are leading the league standings. For Zodiac, this is Bright Kanyama.
A U.S. man has been sentenced to more than 15 years in prison for abusing underage girls in an orphanage in Kenya. Christian missionary Gregor Dole set up the orphanage with his wife in 2008. FBI's Michael Disro said Doe was the proverbial wolf in sheep's clothing. Last year, Doe pleaded guilty in the U.S. court to four counts of engaging in illicit sexual conduct with a minor in a foreign place. That's how we conclude this edition of News. And before we go... A recap of the top stories. Government appeals for stakeholders' hand in preparing citizens for COVID-19 vaccine administration. Labor Minister Kandodo Ford Salima Sugar Company of hiring foreign nationals beyond required numbers. Make schedule to meet soon on by-elections for six vacant constituencies and wards. In sports, Sulama awaits government's clearance on public gatherings to resume Super League games. Visit our website for more on these and other stories. My name is Sibong Gidiziambo. Bye for now. Let's take a moment to talk about money. Life can get a little pricey out there. The passing pleasure of a restaurant meal. Fleeting fast food feast 